Good morning, church, and welcome to Sunday, November 13th. Harold Derby will start us with There's a Song. There's a song of love in my heart. Love is a gift from Jesus. There's a song of love in my heart. Love is a gift from God. Alleluia. Love in my heart is singing. Sunday's devotions found in the Upper Room Discipline, written by Dan R. Dick. And our scripture reading is Luke 21, 5-19. When some were speaking about the temple and how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, As for these things that you see, the day will come when not one stone will be left upon another. It will all be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will this be, and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go near them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first. But the end will not follow immediately. Nor, then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and plagues. And there will be a dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will make, so make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. For I will give you the words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends. And they will say, put some of you to death. And you will be hated by all because of your my name. But not a hair of your head will per perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A friend of the author's was lamenting her current relationship with her 14-year-old daughter. Anytime I disagree with her or tell her she can't do something, she runs into her room, slams the door, screaming, the whole world is against me. The author sympathizes with his friend, but he still remembers that tumultuous time in his life when he also felt that the whole world was against him. He felt like nothing I said or did was good enough. He never felt confident and was constantly questioning whether anyone really liked or loved him. Whenever he, he hears someone say that they wish they were young again, he just shakes his head. It's not easy feeling like the whole world stands in opposition to your very existence. Jesus can relate. In Luke, Jesus tells his followers that they will face in the times to come, foreshadowing what will happen to him very shortly. The world has very little patience with people who call for radical change. Social upheaval, the redistribution of power and property, and abandoning conventional wisdom to be a faithful witness to Jesus Christ and the vision of God for a just and loving and free world is to invite the whole world to be against you. 
but this is how our invitation and our purpose. We proclaim God's wisdom by speaking truth to power and calling for transformation of the world. Thank God for the blessed and powerful gifts of Christian community and the Holy Spirit. We never stand alone. We are one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry and witness to the world. Let us pray. Make us one, O God, so that as your people, united by your love, we will live to honor and glorify you. Amen. Our closing hymn is, Come, Ye Thankful People, Come. <laughs>